Well, I finally did it. I bought my first slab. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehaas. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys my very first slab. That is right, I actually bought a slab for the very first time in my comic book collecting career. So this is a milestone video that I'm gonna share with you guys today. Uh, but more importantly, I also wanna talk about you know, overpaying for books that you wanna get your hands on and why that might actually be okay in today's market. But before I get into that, if you guys can drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying my content, love interacting with you guys, help support the channel, do one of those things and I would appreciate it. But uh, yeah, let's get into the main uh, conversation for today, of course, which is going to be me showing off to you guys uh, my very first slab that I purchased. So uh, before I you know get into it, let, let's let's set the stage a little bit. Let, let's paint a little bit of a, of a picture. So there's a particular store that uh, is nearby me. It's a, it's actually a board game store, and uh, you know I'll go in for, in it from time to time. I mean we are Swagglehaus Comics and Games, right? You know so I do like to play games every now and again. And uh, this store has like just a handful of slabbed comic books. Like there there's like maybe ten. You know it's like maybe at one point they did comic books, but uh, over the years like you know the, the, these slabs have just kind of collected dust. Like literally they're like up there for sale, but nobody gets them because you know everyone who goes into the store is looking for board game stuff. Uh, so I've been going into this store like over the last you know year and a half, and there was one particular slab in there that uh, you know I always had my eye on. Like it was always something that like hmm yeah if I maybe one day decide to do it I, I would purchase it. But it was always listed at a higher price than you know websites like Key Collector or Go Collect would suggest the fair market value is for it. So I, I never pulled the trigger. But you know. Over this last few months and like kind of looking at where the market's been going, you know, I've been following this particular book's uh, value and I've noticed that, it, you know, it's it's been creeping up, you know, creeping up, creeping up, creeping up with every sale and to the point where it, it's almost like the, the list price that this particular store had it at is very, very close to the FMV of the book. And there were actually a few instances where I would see this book getting sold for more. So, uh, you know, after I went to Frankenstein's, which was my video yesterday, in case you guys didn't see it, uh, you know, I was on my way back. And, uh, you know, even though I, I got some great books, I, I was thinking to myself, you know, maybe I should go to that store and, and just check out and, and see if, if the book is still there. And if, and if the book is still there, which, you know, basically it's always been there because nobody has been getting it for at least for the last like, year and a half. But I told myself, if the book is still there, I think today is going to be the day. I think I'm going to go in there and I think I'm going to buy it. And uh, I did end up going in there and sure enough, the book was there. Uh, so, you know, I asked the guy to take a look at it. Uh, I asked him if, if we could, you know, make a deal or negotiate the price. He was pretty firm on it. Um, but so we, I got him down like 50 bucks or whatever. And I was able to finally get my hands on this book. And lo and behold, the very first slab I picked up is Avengers number four, first appearance of Captain America in the Silver Age at a 3.0 grade. And, uh, you know, as you guys know, I am in pursuit of my Avengers Grail run. Uh, I did tell myself, you know, I wanted to get all raw books, but, you know, based on like me looking for this book and knowing that this this slab was there and it's at a grade that like is a price that I feel comfortable spending, uh, you know, I just, I was like, this is the time. This is the time to get it. I, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to go into that store one day and not see it there and feel really bad that I missed out on it. And I just felt like, you know, even though I don't didn't want to get slabs, I figured, hey, why not bite the bullet and, and just go for my very first slab? And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really happy that I got it. I, this is, is such a cool book. Uh, Captain America is in my top three favorite characters of all time. It's a uh, Silver Surfer, Dark Hawk, and Captain America. Those are my three favorite characters of all time. And, uh, you know, to me, it's like if I can't ever get a Captain America comics number one, I feel like Avengers number four, this is like as good as it gets, right? As good as it gets for uh, having a grail for uh, effectively my favorite superhero. We're going to continue to talk about this slab and overpaying for books in a second. But before we do, let's take a moment to talk about Key Collector app. What is Key Collector app? Well, Key Collector app is an app that allows you to find key and hot books just in the palm of your hand. You know, not everything has a CGC slab and a label at the top that notates what the significance is. So if you're out there hunting raw books and you need to find what are some of the good Captain America books to get your hands on, you know, open up Key Collector and you can search Captain America and find out what some of the significance is. And the best part about Key Collector app is that it's actually free to use, but there is a premium subscription service that gives you access to early hot books, spec books, and 
and dollar bin dives that you may want to get your hands on. And if you use my promo code SWAGLEHOSS, you will get two weeks for free for this premium service. So definitely check out Key Collector app. Highly recommend. I want to talk about this idea of overpaying for books, quote unquote, overpaying for books, because the FMV of a 3.0 right now for this book, as of the recording of this video, is $1,300. That's what it's you know listed ad uh, listed as on various various sites. And uh, I, you know I can tell you guys what I paid for this. I paid $1,450. Right, 1450 for this 3.0. And that's probably a little bit higher than I could have maybe got if I sniped a deal online, or maybe there was a live auction bid on eBay. You know, I actually did see a, a live auction bid on eBay uh, sell after I picked this one up for like that fourteen hundred dollar mark, except it was a three point five. So you know, there there were op there are opportunities out there. I think to you know find this book for a deal that was you know maybe at FMV or lower than FMV. Um, but you know, for me, I wanted to get my hands on it, and I did decide that overpaying in this instance was going to be worth it. And uh, you know, that kind of segues us to like the next part of the conversation, and and just what. I've been thinking about in general and and I, I kind of relate it to like you know the housing market so to back it up uh, you know I, I have my house here in, in Southern California and uh, you know at the time in which I purchased this house we actually had to go over asking for the FMV of this house because it was very, very competitive. There were a lot of people that were looking at this home. There were a lot of offers on the table and we actually had to overspend for the like for, for our budget. We had to pay more than we were hoping to to get our hands on this house. And uh, luckily we were able to win the bid, quote unquote, win the bid for this home and, uh, and, and get our hands on this. And at the time it felt really bad, you know, because we went over asking. And we felt like we kind of overpaid and there was a little bit of a feeling uh, that we kind of regret it. But we knew that, you know, this particular house was the one for us. We knew that we wanted to be in this area. We knew we wanted to be in this neighborhood. And for that reason, we decided that, like, you know, we'll stretch our budget uh, and we'll, we'll overshoot uh, the FMV in order to get our hands on this home. And then, you know, we flash forward here. You know, I've been in this home for, the, for three years now. And, you know, when we look at the current value of this house, uh, it's, it's well above what we initially overpaid for at that time. So, you know, ultimately we are super, super happy that, you know, we, we, even though technically at the time we overpaid for it, uh, we're happy that, you know, we got in to the home that we wanted. So that got me thinking about this particular comic book here, which is like, you know, I know that Avengers number four, especially this, this one, Captain America, you know, first appearance in the Silver Age. I know that this is one of my grails. I know that I want this book. And for that reason, you know, I, I told myself like, hey, it's it's okay if you decide that you're gonna overpay now to get your hands on this book. Granted, it's a very, very hot market. So maybe, you know, we're in a bubble and overpaying is a bad thing right now. But, you know, just looking at like the next five years, as long as the MCU is continuing to run, I feel like this bubble is gonna hang around. And I think for that reason, like getting my hands on this book, uh, and going after it aggressively was the right move because you know there's always been there's already been rumors that Chris Evans is going to reprise his role as Captain America at least one more time in the MCU. I feel like he's going to do it a lot more times, but at least one more time as of you know the rumors that are circulating right now. And I feel like you know this is this was the time to like aggressively get this thing. And you know you, one of the things is like you just never know when that kind of announcement is going to come out, right? You never know that like you could wake up this morning and all of a sudden it's like, hey, there's a deadline article. Chris Evans is gonna make an appearance in Doctor Strange. And then all of a sudden like that, the market just goes after these books. And so for that reason, like, you know, you, you always want, um, you, you never wanna like miss out or you never wanna miss out, especially if you have that opportunity. Additionally, uh, you know, there were probably online options for me. Granted, I, I set aside my rules for myself that I was only going to buy Avengers books in person for my grail run. That was the game for me. So, you know, eBay is not something that I'm, I'm trying to utilize for, for my hunt. But uh, yeah, I mean, there are opportunities to, to buy stuff on eBay, but you know, when you're spending this kind of money, at least for me, you know, it's like, it's always kind of a gamble. Like, I don't know, you, know, you can see pictures online, but you, you don't know if the slab is cracked. You don't know if there's shenanigans. What if it gets lost in the mail? You still got to pay for shipping. How long do you have to wait? There's a lot of different variables and different factors that uh, kind of make it a little bit of a risk. And if I can spend, you know, $120 more, uh, you know, to see the thing in person, hold it in my hand, examine it, and actually walk home 
uh, with it that day, uh, you know, I think that that's okay, at least in this instance when, you know, we're kind of at that number range. So uh, that's something that I just kind of wanted to throw out to you guys. Like, I feel like overpaying sometimes is okay to do. And, uh, you know, especially especially if it's for a grail that you know you're going to hold on to for the long run. Like, you know, this is similar to like, if, you're, if you know you're going to move into your forever home, you know, it might be worth spending that extra money to get into that neighborhood. So I'm happy I did it. Avengers number four, uh, first appearance of Captain America in the Silver Age, 3.0. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm super, super happy I got it. Uh, yeah, just take a chance to admire it right now. But, uh, you know, one of the other things I wanted to say is like somebody who, you know, this is the first slab I've ever gotten. I, I don't know how you guys feel out there, but th this is like so weird to me that like, you know, I, I bought this thing, I walked home with it, and then I stared at it and I really admired it. And then I and then I put it on 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 the wall behind me. But then, like I, I felt like because it wasn't raw, like I felt like I missed out on you know some of that ceremony of like flipping open the book, uh, you know, sniffing it. If you guys are into like sniffing like the old comic books and things like that, uh, rebagging and boarding it. Right there, there's there's a little bit of that ceremony that is really really nice when you get a book, especially in the raw version, and you get to like kind of feel it and everything. Uh, whereas the slap, you know, I just I I, I just kind of got it and now I just got it. Like, what do I do with it now? I just look at it. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just kind of a funny thing that like I, I'm not used to with with my slab books. But but still, I'm, I'm so, so happy I got it. It does look beautiful. Um, and uh, yeah, but, you know, what was really funny is actually it, one of the other things that I noticed is on this particular book. Let me show you guys here. Let me see if you can see this. See this spine roll right here. Like, see how the back actually has like, you know, some of the pages protruding. That actually got me thinking like, hey. What if I crack this open and fix that spine roll? Because that seems like something that you could definitely fix through a press. And I, I wonder if I resubmit it, could I get that like 0.5 bump? You know, because uh, it's hard for me to tell. Like, I don't know if this book was pressed necessarily. In fact, there is a little bit of a dimple here on the spine. So maybe there, there's a possibility that you could fix the spine roll. And uh, look at me already. Like, I, I got my first slab and I'm already talking about cracking it to, uh, uh, to try to see if I can bump the grade. But uh, that is something that I think, you know, could be kind of cool, at least good content, right? We could get, we guys could, we could do that all together and then I'll be able to flip through this book. But, you know, let me know guys, if you think I should do that, let me know if you think that's a terrible idea. Have you guys ever cracked your, your books open before? But uh, yeah, Avengers number four. Anyways, that is all I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know uh, what you guys think. Uh, have you guys ever cracked open a book? Um, what do you guys think of me having a slab now? I'm going to, I'm going to put it on the wall behind me. It's going in that top left corner. Is it going to affect the, you know, the balance of the wall behind me probably uh and uh, eventually i'm gonna have to get more slabs but uh that's all i have for this video drop me a like comment subscribe if you're supporting the channel and i will see you in the next one